Hello there and welcome back to a brand new day in the studio. So now this painting is dry. So this was a very simple and easy underpainting that we started a couple days ago. So let me go over the palette. So what we're using today is titanium white, flake white, burnt umber, alizarin permanent, cadmium red medium, yellow ochre, sap green, ultramarine blue, and ivory black. These are all artist grade oil paints. And if you're interested in uh, exactly what materials I'm using as far as the canvas and the brands and all all that stuff that's all going to be typed in the description box down below for you so here is an image of our model Natalia and I'm going to keep a picture of Natalia right there in the top left corner of your screen so you can refer to it as the painting develops so right below here yep so right over here we have a container with my odorless mineral spirits and my medium, Neo McGilp. Neo McGilp is a gel-like medium. It's a fast dryer as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a little bit of my Neo McGilp and I'm gonna just put it right onto the area of the portrait that I'm going to be working on today. So uh, again, some of you have asked about the setup. I do have a different camera setup now. So the camera is actually pretty much front and center and my head is right next to the camera. Uh, if I had a second camera here, I would show you. Uh, but again, we're just working with the one camera and I'm gonna be guiding you through uh, these paintings hopefully with the best audio and best visual quality that I can provide for you so Yeah, I'm just applying the medium over top of the surface that I plan on working on for today I'm probably going to get into some of the hair and maybe the background, but not entirely sure So for now, I'm definitely sure that I'm gonna go into these shapes. So I'm oiling out this area Now I could do uh, one or two things here. So I could go back in with a drawing brush and obviously draw in in a linear fashion, much more specificity onto these shapes that have been left uh, very, very simplified. Or I can go in with large brushes and uh, carve out kind of like in a sculptural type of uh, way, the large planes of color. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking maybe not to worry too much on the outline since I did do a lot of uh, more refined linear drawings before so might as well just do something a little bit different. So I'm going to start off with a simple gradation of flesh tone on the palette. So those of you that may be new to oil painting or maybe have never tried oil painting before you can easily follow along with these flesh tone mixtures. So titanium white and yellow ochre is going to be my first mixture of choice and this would be probably one of the lightest lights and again this is just for very simple uh, flesh tone combinations now i'm going to move on down i'm going to use a little, little bit of cadmium red and notice how it's just a little tiny bit of the cadmium red and then i'm going to introduce a little bit of sap green and alizarin permanent very very tiny 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 so a little bit more of the uh, sap green and then the titanium white it's almost like a pastel kind of color very uh, very uh, bright so now to contrast the brightness I'm using burnt umber oh and by the way uh, I don't know if I mentioned it yet but if you're new to oil paints or if you're interested in how you can save your oil paints notice how there's a lot of paint on my palette uh, all of that just kind of came out of the, my freezer. So whenever I'm done painting, I just put the paint on a sheet of glass or something uh, similar to, to this one, but smaller. And then I uh, just stick it in the freezer and it, it'll stay dry. And tell you what, even my burnt umber is actually cooperating with me these days. So if you've been watching these videos for a while, you know that my burnt umber tends to dry really fast. But uh, this one is actually, it's doing pretty well. It's a moderately fast dryer. I guess the uh, different tubes vary in terms of their drying times, I'm, I'm guessing. So let's get a little bit of ultramarine blue. Now we're working our way. We're walking our way down towards the darker flesh tones. And again, this isn't meant to be a final flesh tone or anything like that, and especially for uh, all of uh, the beginners out there, um, 
So again, if you're watching this and you're really getting, you're really interested in learning how to mix color for flesh tone, you can easily follow along, you can slow down the video, you can scroll back and forth and you can see exactly what combinations I used for each little area of dark and light. It was very, very chill, very, very relaxing. So now, I guess that's going to be about it for that flesh tone value scale. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get a different brush. And I'm probably going to get a fairly beat up brush. So this is a kind of a synthetic, synthetic brush. Fairly, fairly used up brush. Can't really get my camera to zoom. Um, so anyway, I'm going to pick an area to develop the planes. And you know what? I'm feeling kind of ambitious today. And if you're feeling ambitious, go right in for the eyes. Uh, this is not something that I would recommend per se. I'd say if you really wanted to get into uh, a simple area to warm up, I'd probably, I'd probably choose the forehead. The forehead is a much more forgiving area to develop. But yeah, let's let's be a little ambitious today. Every day we can be in the studio is the day we can learn and have fun. So let's go ahead and just put in a little bit of a plane change here. And very simply, we're going to start to get the effect of form just through the application of these values. So again, I'm going to be tinting my value scale. So notice how with the same brush, a little bit of a lizard permanent right into this area here. So here's a little tip here. You don't have to obtain the right color right away, especially if you know that you're going to be giving yourself uh, ample time to create your paintings. So again, if you're a beginner, I definitely would suggest to slow it down and relax and, and really give yourself as much time as you need. Again, painting is really it's really a nice way to to uh, sit back, relax, and it's like one of those sitting back, relaxing, having a cup of tea kind of things. So a little bit darker down here. So I know, I know it looks a little bit strange because we don't have the light of the eye. So I'll tell you what, we're gonna mix up something for the light of the eye. So I'm gonna get a different brush for that. Suppose this one. So this is a clean and dry brush. So I'm actually going to use my flake white. And for those of you that are wondering why I have two whites, so if you're wondering why I have two whites, the flake white has this property of which allows you to use more of it without raising the value too much, thus giving the paint a much thicker body, a much uh, thicker consistency to it. You don't have to use flake white if you don't want to. See how it's not really tinting it that much, but I actually have a lot of paint on here now. So what I'm going to do now is raise the value. Notice how it just was a little bit of titanium white. See how it's starting to raise the value quite substantially. And that is how you can go back and forth between your titanium white and your flake white. It's almost like a manual shift car. If you want more acceleration, then you might want to stick to a lower gear, and that is what the titanium white is. And if you want less acceleration and more kind of uh, efficiency, uh, you want to stick to a, a higher gear. Sorry, this is the lower gear. It makes you accelerate faster, the titanium white right here. This is the higher gear, which means you can raise the value much faster. This is the... Ugh, I'm getting those confused. Never mind. <laughs> you can control the um, the rate at which you raise the value, okay? Not really that well rehearsed with cars. So let's just stick with painting. How about that? So I'm putting in a little more flesh tone. So a little bit of flesh tone and a little bit of the gray that we mixed up. This was just black and white. Both of my whites and the ivory black and then a little bit of flesh tone will give us the color for the sclera. So I'm not sure if that'll be the exact color, but let's try it out. So now you're in close-up mode. So we're putting in a little bit of light here. 
So again, I do also have a different microphone set up. So um, yeah, some of the struggles for me in terms of filming is that there's a lot of background noise that goes around uh, where I'm filming. So there is a chance that this more sensitive microphone will pick up the noise around me. So one thing you're gonna learn about me uh, since you can hear my environment a little more I'm gonna see if I can edit it out in the editor, but anyway. Uh, one thing you'll learn about me is that I can lose focus very easily. So I'm someone that, um, when I get into focusing on painting and I lose focus, it's, it's not a good thing for me. It's very difficult for me to uh, maintain focus. So I'm putting in just kind of the uh, the light of the sclera. Notice how very blue it is uh, because all of the colors around are fairly um, fairly warm because we still haven't touched any of them but it, it'll even itself out uh, later on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a different brush and in this area of the palette, so this is a clean and dry brush I'm using ivory black, ultramarine blue Sap green. And we're going to start to sketch in some of the darks for the uh, for the iris. So again, this is this is what you do if you're feeling very ambitious, uh, starting off with the eye. It's not very not not very recommended, but if I'm going to be doing these videos every day, might as well change things up once in a while. So I'm going to tint it with a little bit of a alizarin permanent. So now we're going to tint it a little bit warmer. We're going to sneak in a little bit of warmth into this area of the eye. I'll push this down. So I'm going in with these very large planes and it, it may not seem very large. I did say in the beginning that I was going to stick to a kind of more sculptural approach and that's that's what we're doing. It's just we're focusing that sculptural approach on just this one section of the painting. And by sculptural approach Imagine that this is a, a piece of clay, and with the clay, what you do is you want to cut into the molding over here. I'm not sure if I'm getting the terminology right, but you would want to cut right into this area with the clay so that when the light hits the sculpture, it creates a little bit of a darker accent. But in paint, you don't need to do all that. With paint, all you do is literally just paint it darker, and it appears darker. Now again, I apologize if you hear any noise. There's a lot of noise going on around me, which is kind of driving me a little bit crazy, but it's okay. We're going to be okay. I must sound crazy right now, but uh, yes, I don't really function well if there's noise going on around me. So titanium white, and notice how there was a little bit of paint onto here. And oh, by the way, you now have more close-up shots of the palette. So I hope that this helps out. And we're going to have a little bit of a brighter light over here. And again, if this were a sculpture, what I would, what you would do is get like a little piece of clay and just point it right onto the area that you want to appear as a highlight. And for us, it's somewhere over there. Not exactly where I put it, but it's fairly close to where you would want it. So I'm going to go ahead and just try to adjust this shape here. And that's pretty much all you need to get the forms to, to read. Now we're going to push a little more light. So we're going to put in a little more dark into this brush. I really like this brush, so I'm going to read out what brush it is to you. Remember, no one's paying me to tell you any any of this stuff. Well, I tried. I'm going to read it out. It's a it says number two. Princeton Select Liner. So it's a number two Princeton Select Liner. I did try to get it to focus a little bit, but um, camera wasn't working with me. And now we're going to put in a little bit of a light shape here, but not as bright as the highlight. So 
So really the next thing to do is to just uh, start to observe all of these planes, even around the eye. Imagine the eye as just kind of like a, a sphere, a round sphere. And we're going to observe all of the planes and we're going to carve out very specific shapes for them. So you could think of all of these valley transitions as planes. So I'm going to put a little bit of cadmium red into this area here just to uh, stick to this value range, but just make it a little bit warmer. So let's go ahead and adjust these values. And we're going at it plane by plane. Maybe that'll be the title of this video. Just plane by plane. See how, just with these very few little modifications, it's starting to read like an eye in space. Obviously not, not a great eye, but it's starting to develop. So now we're going to get a little bit of a darker transition into here. And um, let's go to the palette. And we're going to be mixing into this little area of the palette. So again, plane by plane. This plane is facing the light a little bit less. And I really, really do apologize. I'm sorry I keep mentioning that. The noise around me is driving me nuts. It's not always sunshine and daisies. So what I'm going to do... Let's get a little bit of sap green into this area here. And I'm going to look at the concavity of the eye socket. And so which point is it facing the light less? And so probably right around here. And so now I'm just going to look at the specificity around the eye. So right around here, there's a little bit of a form, or sorry, there's a little bit of a plane change that appears warmer in the photo reference, but that's makeup. Uh, this, this appearing red isn't, it wouldn't happen in nature. Pretty sure that that red shape that you're seeing right over here, uh, that's, that's pretty much makeup, but the value transition itself is uh, something that's happening just because the form is turning but it wouldn't be getting as dark over here so i'm painting it as i see it but i'm also aware that this is probably darker around here uh, just because of the uh, superficial uh, quality of the makeup which is not a bad thing it's just important to be aware of it and if you're painting plane by plane, it's important to know what is a plane and what is not a plane. And so this this kind of drastic drop in value around here, that's not due to a plane. That's pretty much due to the superficial makeup. Now another plane. Pretty much just a flat chisel into that area. But enough with that one eye. So now we're going to, uh, after we soften this little edge here, we're going to leave the uh, the eyebrow alone. So we're going to venture off into, tell you what, tell you what, we're going to venture off into the glabella. And so if you haven't had too much experience with the uh, glabella, here's how you do it. So a little bit of a plain change. So a little bit of a value drop as this plane starts to face the light a little bit less. See that? So a little bit of a plane change right over there. And then we're going to be receiving much more light up here, but we already have that value in the underpainting. So then what we're going to do is just cool that color down a little bit, just tapping into the ultramarine blue. Going into this area here. And again, plane by plane. Very simple, very easy. So with this same value, uh, 
we're working all around the glabella so we're going to look at the uh, the side plane over here so it's actually going to be a little more light uh, in this area though it may be hard to see on the photo reference the photo reference is probably most likely flattening this area out so in fact there would be a little more light in this area so a little bit more light in this area than this area so this is what I would call a sandwiched value so that this value is lighter than this one but it's not any it's not as light as this one so it's kind of sandwiched and we can raise the value even more than we see it so long as we keep track of our value range so it appears now that we're venturing off towards the forehead but I'm not going to do too much towards the forehead so I know that it, it may be looking a little bit strange with that one eye uh, having these values and the rest not really being uh, depicted yet so what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to have to pick and choose which areas to get into I think what I'm going to do is just go into this eye and describe it a little better so we're going to get into this little area of the value range and again let's notice this angle here I'm going to go ahead and clean off this brush so just using my odorless mineral spirits, very simply, just dabbing it dry onto the paper towel. And let's go ahead and put in some medium while we're at it. And a little bit of alizarin permanent, ivory black. I just want something very, very dark. There we go. Now we have the value that we want. We want to be very careful not to describe more than we need at this stage. So just a simple little dark shape there. A little bit of a lizard permanent just to bring back the shape for the eyebrow. And I'm not going to show you the same thing over and over again. So with this eye, I'm not going to show you how I do the uh, all of these values that I did here because that'd be kind of redundant to show you the same thing over and over. So I'm just going to show you a simplified little version of it. Then I'll come back to put more information into it later. And so we're going to clean off another brush here just with the odorless mineral spirits and it's not a fairly uh, new brush it's really used up but it's actually going to work pretty well for the uh, purpose that we're going to to do right now and so again plane by plane we're going to be observing all of these very subtle gradations I've had a lot of questions in terms of the just the word subtlety how to even obtain subtlety so there is going to be quite a bit of subtlety in here and we're going to have to differentiate certain areas that are uh, local value changes or sorry local color changes and make sure to not get confused uh, so in any case there's going to be some little dissecting we're going to have to do here there is some makeup if you notice in the photo reference uh, maybe over here we can observe maybe the foundation makeup or something like that and we're going to have to uh, differentiate certain areas so let's return to the pattern Palette. And so the easiest area to obtain subtlety first is going to be right here on the palette. So let's go ahead and get into the flake white. And the flake white is really going to be your friend when it comes to subtlety in the flesh tones, especially around the cheekbone area, the zygomatic area. So a lot of flake white, I might have to add in a little bit more. It's okay if it's not a completely clean puddle of flake white. And we're, we're going to want a very nice consistency 
of uh, oil paint to medium. Didn't really add much more medium. Notice how the brush, I'm kind of circling it around. So I'm going to want a very clean gradation of pinks. So uh, that is, that's the lighter pink, and then this is going to get a little bit darker. So we're adding a little bit more. Uh, how about this? How about we'll add a tiny bit of titanium white? See how even a tiny bit of titanium white was playing it kind of close? It almost raised the value too much, but uh, for our purposes, it's pretty good. So let's get one more value, gra value gradation. I'm pretty much just using the colors that already are on the palette. And we want to obtain subtlety. You want to learn how to obtain subtlety on your palette first. And this is really one of the easiest ways to, uh, to observe how to mix subtle gradations of tone. Now, it's going to be a little bit more complicated than this on the actual portrait. But notice how on the palette, we're now playing this game of how close can I make, can I make these values to one another, yet maintain their subtle differentiation. And that is the key to subtlety. So that should be about good. So the cheekbone area is going to live somewhere in this area right here, give or take one more little value shift down here but anyway it's going to live right around this area so again this is going to be plane by plane so without cleaning the brush i'm going to just go into this area of a uh, darker value and we're going to go ahead and put in a little chop so this is a chop a clean division between planes now this is a very risky area to to get into uh so Risky as in you don't want to make this too dark if you make it too dark It'll look like you kind of just took a swing at the, the model's eye And I mean it's okay some folks have darker areas around here I mean I certainly do but um, it's usually an area that you don't want to overemphasize So maybe that value would be about okay for now, so now we're going to just move towards another plane. So again, we're going to be maintaining this kind of value family. And now again, I'm going to be picking and choosing from the values on the palette. So it's going to get a little bit confused around here. So around here, so notice this plane right here on the photo reference there. It looks darker. Uh, this area right here looks darker say than that area on the photo reference but in nature that just wouldn't be the case that is where we're going to decide that that is uh based on the makeup so that's probably i think it's i asked someone at the art group like what what that makeup is called and i think it's something like foundation now of course i'm going to sound like a complete idiot to those of you that know about uh, makeup but really um I don't know much about makeup, but I know that makeup is some type of paint you put on the face, okay? Um, and I'm pretty sure that this value transition here shouldn't be that much darker than, say, uh, this one. I mean, this shouldn't be as dark as it appears on the photo reference. So, uh, forgive me for sounding like a fool <laughs> when it comes to my knowledge of uh, makeup it's just that this plane would be lighter just because this shape you can even observe look right here on the outside shape clearly this plane is facing the light a little bit more and by facing the light i mean that the direction of the light is coming in this fashion so really this plane being more perpendicular to the light source See this kind of like a diagonal. This plane would be receiving more light than say this plane. And they shouldn't be that close in terms of their value. So that's why I decided that this is probably just the effect of the, uh, what is it called? The foundation. I mean, if if it's if it's not called foundation, uh, please correct me. I don't know what this area of makeup is actually called. I know it was something like foundation, but in any case, see plane by plane. Okay, so we started out with this plane and got darker as it went over there. Over here, it got lighter, but subtle changes. Subtle changes. Okay, and then subtle change right over here. So subtlety is what we're obtaining in this area around here. But of course. 
we're going to have to continue to observe the shapes and it's going to be quite tricky to uh, delineate these shapes. Now this area is definitely lighter but right over here it is going to get a little bit darker and that's just because the form is in fact turning away from the light because it's now turning in towards the uh, bottom eyelid right around here. So right around here there is a plane change. So now that you see that I'm taking right from the uh, flesh tones on the palette, now that you see that the mixtures aren't really that complicated, now it's really up to uh, just chopping away at these planes. Notice how this one just made quite a bit of difference here. So now we're seeing a lot more of a clean gradation of tone. Let's even make it a little bit warmer. Just make it a little bit warmer. But in any case, now that you see that these mixtures aren't really that complicated anymore, let's get into close-up. And again, plane by plane. So this whole area right here is going to be a plane that's going to be lighter. And since we're working in layers, uh, it's not going to matter if we get the color a little bit wrong. So instead, so this value here is pretty much the first value you saw me mix on the palette just the titanium white and the yellow ochre so again there's going to be one little ridge value right over here and then the plane is going to drop off uh, in terms of its value it's going to get darker down here and then right around here there's going to be another plane chop so right over here a little bit of a chop with a very subtle drop in value. Subtlety is definitely what we're after here. And now we're gonna go and drop in value. And again, I'm just taking right from the palette. No need to complicate things. We don't have to spend a uh, hundred years mixing up a color just to find out that the value is not correct. Rather, let's get the value correct first and then maybe in another layer we can always modify the color. So again, a very simple uh, gradation there. And just like, just like this area is an area that you don't want to over darken, this is also one that you don't want to over darken. So being very, very, very soft with that. Now, there's going to be a little bit of warmth into here. So let's, let's get you towards the palette. And since I'm actually going to be mixing something, uh, I decided I should show you the palette and the palette in close-up as well. So a little bit of cadmium red into this value range, a little bit of alizarin permanent, and a tiny, tiny bit of something cold, so just from that. Not much more than that. Now we're going to want to look at the very specific boundaries of the form, so right around here. See how I'm kind of turning the brush, turning the brush just to get that clean chop, just like a sculptor would be chopping on the side of the clay uh, to get that shape. And now again, uh, the photo reference appears to be flattening out this area over here. Now, of course, this isn't going to be as drastic as you're seeing it right now, but there is going to be a little bit more of a delineation between the side plane of the face here and then this area here a little bit more than what the photo reference is telling us. So remember it's important not to copy but to interpret visual information. So again playing that subtlety game how close can you get these shapes and still maintain their differentiation. You know, it's like that game, what's that game called, like, how, how low can you go? Um, limbo, or is it Limbo? I don't know, the one where how low can you go, and you have to kind of move over <laughs> and bend underneath of something um, and try not to fall over. It's the same kind of thing with subtlety. Subtlety is how close can you get the values, yet maintain their differentiation. See how very simple this is? Now we're really starting to get the effect of the form. Now it's just a matter of fine-tuning these shapes to one another. For instance, another simple little drop in value here. Now we can get into much more specificity for these shapes.
now we're going to move on to the uh, planes for the nose and the structure of the mouth. So how about with the nose, we're going to start off with a little bit of a plane change just for the bottom of the nose. So we're going to use cadmium red medium and how about we get a little crazy. Let's use the cadmium red medium and the sap green together in about equal parts. Till we get a nice neutral color. So something about like this, letting it mix into the colors that were already on the palette. Now let's just go ahead and put in this plane. Now the value of the plane is going to be kind of sandwiched in between the value of the shadow over here and the uh, value of the surrounding flesh tones. So it's a very simple little brush stroke. We're going to have the delineation for the the nose in this area. Now we're going to move on to the wing of the nose. So we're going to move up on the value scale, make it a little bit more pink with the cadmium red medium and the titanium white and uh, just about equal parts. Just letting it mix into the value that we had over here. Now we're going to put in this value for the wing of the nose and the wing of the nose is a little bit darker but it's not too dark so I'm kind of over darkening it right now which is okay I can just move right up the value scale very quickly and adjust now again we're going plane by plane for this so another light plane here not very much don't need much for that now we're going to get a, uh, which, which brush is this? The one that I like, the Princeton Select Liner. It says six Princeton Select Liner. And again, no one is paying me to tell you this. So I really like this brush. Even though it's pretty, pretty worn out. Still does pretty well. So now we have that little plain delineation for the nose. Let's get a little bit more of the uh, yellow ochre. Let's go ahead and put this plane change as the wing of the nose approaches the bulb of the nose. And then right down here we have the root of the nose. Super simple. And how about we get a little bit of a darker color. So I'm going to clean off this brush with just my odorless mineral spirits and the paper towel. And how about just burnt umber? Just try to keep it really simple. And just like that, we have the uh, little accent for the nostril on one side, and now on the other side. Or at least just about. Super simple. Now we're just gonna move on down towards the the uh, the mouth. So we're gonna keep these shapes very simple, simple and easy. As I always say, keep your shape simple and easy for you to understand. Let's see if you can finish my sentence. Keep your shape simple and easy for you to understand. So that when the time comes to make changes, those changes are simple and easy to manage. Alright, so now for the um, for the mouth, I'm going to go ahead and quickly notice that if I drop a vertical from here, say, say from the side here down here, the mouth won't go as far as it was in the uh, preliminary sketch, or should I say the, uh, the underpainting. So that's alright, see how easy we can just easily just move those shapes around. So I'll tell you what, for the mouth, we're really going to want to focus on uh, some things that are counterintuitive. So rather than starting off with the uh, the careful uh, little shapes for the lips themselves, we're going to go in for the structures around the lips. So right over here, there's a little bit of light for the filtrum. And again, we're going plane by plane, and what we really want 
is to get the effect of the structures surrounding the mouth to read in space. If you'll notice in a lot of paintings, a lot of portrait paintings, um, especially uh, John Singer Sargent portrait paintings, there really isn't that much information in the lips. It's usually, the stuff usually happens around the lips, so the structures that encompass the mouth is really what uh, brings the attention, or at, at least it's what creates the structure, okay? So a little bit darker over here, so this is going to be another very tricky value that we want, we don't want to overdo, but it is there, so we want to be very careful for this uh, with this value change, and it's okay if we lose a little bit of the clarity for where the mouth is at the moment, it's all right. We're going to come back in and correct that. And again, don't worry too much about getting uh, the exact color just yet. Again, this is definitely a painting that uh, we want to develop with layers. Very different to the, uh, the paint along. Or... I guess all the paint-alongs. So the paint-alongs were definitely, all of Prima, definitely much faster paced than this. Even though there were more videos of that process. Uh, when you're painting all of Prima, you're really pressed for time and you really want to get the color that you want right away. Whereas in this, this uh, approach, this is, the classical approach, but even more simplified, I would say. So really, what we're looking for is just large picture stuff. And even though I'm using a fairly small brush, I'm still thinking of the large picture. Notice how we're just kind of easily just cutting in and shaping these forms. We're really thinking about big picture stuff. And it's just my preference right now to use a smaller brush for this task just because it gives me a little bit more control. Sometimes we want a larger brush uh, to ensure that we don't put in too many little shapes, too many little nuances, but then oftentimes we want a smaller brush like this one just to ensure that we have much more control over our value range and pretty much more control over how we delineate each shape. So it's going to get a little bit darker towards here, and we're going to let the value gradation drop very, very subtle. We're going to let the drop in value be very subtle. We want almost an airbrushed type edge. Super, super soft. It's important to know which edges you want to be super soft. Just as It's just as important to know that as the edges that are going to be super sharp. So right over here. Again, the underpainting actually describes this pretty well, but let's just go in with a simple little shape right there. It's actually going to be a little darker here, but uh, that's okay. Let's go ahead and get a clean brush and just subtract that. So what we want is this little boundary here. And again, it's all about interpreting visual information. So I'm not really trying to outline this or trace it or anything. I'm just looking for the boundary of the forms, the form boundaries. As my uh, teacher and amazing artist uh, John DeMartin would say to look for the base boundary. And the base boundary is pretty much that little outline that you saw the boundary delineating the border between one form and another form. And again, all we're doing now is just cleaning up this gradation. We want a crisp and clean gradation from one form onto the other form. And in particular, this form here for the bottom of the mandible. It's a very, very quiet, very, very subtle drop in uh, edge, or should I say subtle change in edge quality. And this edge around here is usually one of the most uh, kind of elaborate edges to describe. So describing this edge adequately in words 
it's kind of quite uh, difficult. So it's softer here, sharper here as it approaches this corner, and then gets soft again down here. And um, that soft again down here part is uh, what I'm working on right now. So I'm going to notice, or I'm noticing that this whole plane is getting darker. And I think maybe it's, I don't know what it is, I think it's the photo reference. But this drop in value from here to here is really intense. It's a very fast change in value that I don't think would quite exist in nature. So something's a little off here. And uh, I don't know if it's the makeup. I don't know if, uh, question, do you put makeup? Not, I mean, not Natalia in, in particular, but do folks put makeup on their chins as well? I don't quite know, but I'll tell you what, I don't think that it's the makeup. I think that it's just the uh, quality of the photograph. It gets kind of blurry around the chin, so it, cry it kind of imposes a superficial value change, but it could also be the makeup as well. And again, there's nothing wrong with makeup. Um, I just think that this value drop should be a little more subtle than what the photograph is telling us. So again, it's very important not to copy the photograph. It's important to work from life as much as you can and thus knowing uh, when something like this is the effect of the photographic distortion. So photographs not only distort perspective and color, but they can also distort uh, edge quality by, uh, or sorry, value quality by making this a little too, again, a little too sharp, or a little too fast of a gradation. And I, again, I think it needs to be more subtle here than the photograph is describing. So here's how we're going to achieve that subtlety very, very carefully. Very much like a graphite pencil. Just kind of hatching away, trying to get a very clean edge. Now as far as the color of the lips are concerned, I'm going to go for a little bit of an alizarin permanent mixed into this kind of darker middle tone region of the palette. Uh, but again, I don't want it to be uh, such a dark color. So a little bit of the alizarin permanent and burnt umber. And a tiny bit of cadmium red. And we're gonna put that shape in starting with the top middle portion of the lips. So right around here. So we want to make sure that we follow that center line. So again, the center line is an imaginary line running across the uh, the middle of the face, going all the way down towards here, down over here, and then there, meeting right towards here. And that would be delineating basically the the middle portion of the mouth. And we also want to think about the characteristics of the philtrum as well. So the philtrum is a little uh, more well defined than I have in the painting. So here's how we'll uh, delineate it a little better. Again, just took flesh tone, some flesh tone right off the palette. And also the length of the filtrum is something that we're going to want to take into consideration. So uh, the length being the physical length from the root of the nose to the top middle portion of the mouth. I think it's all right, or, or I think the length that it is in the painting is all right. So I'm going to just soften these edges a little bit and then just add a little more of a touch here for the philtrum. The philtrum is also a very uh, delicate area of the portrait. You don't want to overdo the shape for the philtrum. Now we're adding a little bit of light around the lips. And again, the philtrum is 
pretty well delineated in the uh, in the photo reference, but we want to make it noticeable yet still subtle. And I think maybe just down to this part right here, the middle of the lips, I think that it, it can have a little more of a careful shape. So it might need to taper down a little bit there. And there's a little bit of the light for the top middle portion of the lips. And this is definitely the area of the lips that you want to pay a lot of attention to. But in any case, now we can go ahead and look at the corner of the mouth right over there. So again, you want to relate the corner of the mouth to the corner of the nose and the corner of the nose to the corner of the eyes. So tear duct to nostril to mouth. So just using a little vertical gesture here, I think that the mouth is, is in an okay kind of place. So let's just go ahead and darken this area around it. And pretty much just took whatever off the palette that was darker. Not too concerned with getting the right color just yet. We're going to be building towards that. And definitely, definitely, there's going to be a little more of a dark shape down here. And returning to the palette, somewhere in this value range, we're going to want a very kind of neutral, half, a neutral middle tone pink. So a little bit of the alizarin permanent, and say around this, this color family. So let's see how this color does. And that's pretty good. And with a very soft and delicate touch. Definitely don't need to smash the paint onto this area. And I just want a little bit of light there. And over here. But with less pressure, I can get a darker value. And with more pressure, say over here, I can get a brighter value. And I think one of the last things I'll do for this layer of the painting, so I'm considering the stage that I want the painting to dry before I get into the next uh, layer. I'm thinking that uh, what I want to do is just mix up a, uh, a value now for the cast shadow or sorry the form shadow form shadow of the face uh, so remember cast shadow would be something like this a, a shadow that is projected or even better that would be a cast shadow a cast shadow is a projected shadow a form shadow is a shadow on something so anyway uh, i'm thinking of the value for that i think it needs to be a little bit darker i think if not, maybe just about this value, or maybe somewhere in between, sandwiched in between these two values here. Um, so let's just go ahead and clean off a brush. And remember, just odorless mineral spirits. Very simple. But I'm going to make sure that this is very clean. And let's add even a little bit of a... Neo McGill medium because I'm definitely going to want this to dry pretty fast. So value range wise, I'm going to stick to somewhere around here. So let's use let's use some burnt umber first, just because that's what we already had for the underpainting and sap green, flake white. Remember, flake white has the property to it that allows you to use more of it without raising the value too much. Uh, so question of the day, those of you uh, that don't use flake white but have a different white on your palette that has a similar property, uh, go ahead and let us know in the comments section down below. 
I've heard of uh, some other colors. I've heard of uh, permalba white. I've heard of, uh, well, you know that I've used the zinc white in the past. And So w the question of the day, other than titanium white, what other type of whites do you like to use? Do you like to use cremonance white? Do you like to use uh, flake white replacement? Let us know in the comment section down below. So a little bit more flake white. And I want something that's cold, but I don't want it to be like ice cold. I don't want it to be like, say, sap green or ultramarine blue. I want it to be somewhere in between. So that may be pretty close. So I'll tell you what, uh, there's a little bit of a warm and cool nature, and notice in, in the photo reference, there's a little bit more of a cold and cool nature to the flesh tones. So what I'm thinking, what I'm thinking is I might make this one warmer, so a little bit of a lizard permanent. And then in the next layer, if I remember, hopefully I will remember, I will add on the cooler element to it. So notice now we just made it a little bit warmer. You can probably go even warmer, so a little more lizard permanent. So again, question of the day, other than titanium white, what type of white do you like to use and why? How about we throw in a double double portion? So if you like to use say cremonance white, why do you use it? Why do you like to use it? If you like to use um, flake white like I do, you can go ahead and write why. Maybe your answer is different than mine. And that's okay. So again, I just want to flatten all of this out and tell you what, I think that that's light. I'm not entirely sure, but um, I'm, I think that this is light rather than it being a reflected light. I think that this plane is just very, very briefly achieving a tiny bit of light. Or at least I think that it is. So we're just going to cover all around here. And again, I'm making it a little bit warmer than need be. And yes, I know that I didn't, I didn't touch the uh, forehead, so we're actually going to have to do that before this layer dries. And it'll be super, super simple. Just covering all of this. It's going to be darker down there. But again, I'm not really going to get too into reflected lights or anything just yet. It's a little too early for that. So I think that ought to be good for that. So for the uh, forehead, so we're going to just take this brush here. I don't even know what it had. It had a darker color on it, titanium white. Titanium white, cadmium red, yellow ochre. Do you ever get to that point when you're painting and you pick up a brush and you don't know what mixture of color you had on that brush? Or maybe, how about this, does it ever happen to you uh, when you mix up a color on your palette and you spend such a long time mixing it and then you're like, what am I mixing this color for? Does that ever happen to you? Definitely happens to me. So for the forehead, I'm not going to worry too much about it. I'm just going to soften. I'm just going to make sure that I soften uh, the edge for the hairline. So again, this is the shadow color. And I just want to make sure that this edge is soft. And I'm not going to I'm not going to worry too much about the specifics just yet. So let's just get some of that value. Throw that into here. A little bit more light. A little bit more light here. Gonna get the shadow brush just to kind of soften this edge a little bit. See how we can soften by just letting the two 
edges touch one another. Super simple. I'm going to soften this. So a little bit more light. A little bit more titanium white. And tell you what, I'm going to use some more Neo McGilp just in the hopes that this dries in a moderately fast rate. Now that might have been too much titanium white, so let's go ahead and go down in the value scale. And again, it's okay to go a little bit lighter than you need to especially if you know that you're going to be layering because you can always come back you can always come back and just add a add a glaze and it's always easier to glaze darker maybe not always but i think that in in general it's usually easier to glaze darker so i'm going to get the uh shadow brush Final touches for this layer, softening this edge here. And again, I want it to be super, super soft. So just another tip. So if you know that you're going to be applying another layer to your painting, try to make the edges just a little bit softer. Just softening these edges all around. And before I call it a day, I would like to let you know that my website is now back up and running. So yes, my artist website was down for a while. It was under maintenance, but now I'm really, really happy with the way that the website now looks. So again, it is uparifineart.com for my website. And you can go ahead and contact me now again on the website. My, I had so much trouble with my previous website, so I'm not even going to get into that. Uh, but now you can definitely feel free to contact me there. But the easiest way to contact me is through my Instagram page. I do check my Instagram page quite often throughout the day. That being said, I really hope that today's video helps you out. I wish you the best in all of your artwork, and as always, I'll be back again very soon.